What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eastern Current. I want to apologize real quick. I've had some uh, some technical difficulties, and my audio interface is is shot, and so I'm having to order another one. Don't know how long that's going to take with everything going on with the coronavirus. If Amazon will get it here quickly or not. So um, this mic does pretty well, but it's real sensitive. So like any tapping or typing or anything like that, you're going to hear it real well. So and this thunderstorm going on outside, and my dogs if they start whining because of the thunderstorm. So I apologize. But just a few quick things. Um, one, go check out the, the private Facebook group. It's Eastern Current Fishing. There's also Eastern Current, which is where the, the this everything streams live. Eastern Current Fishing is like a group where you can all chat and talk and post. Um, the other thing is if, if you are really loving this podcast and loving this show, um, I would, uh, I've would i created a Patreon account. Um, I'm not trying to make a bunch of money through Patreon. I'm just trying to pay for all the back-end stuff. It's like 175 bucks a month for me um, for, for everything. Um, as far as my editing stuff and um, some of the subscriptions I have through um, hosting the podcast and um, being able to use music and some of the videos and all that. So um, you can donate five bucks a month or 10 bucks a month and it's just super appreciated if y'all do that. Um, I will drop the link to the Patreon account um, in the show notes and I'm going to do some giveaways. If we do, uh, if we get up to 10 Patreon members, um, I'm going to give away two Fenwick HMGs with pen conflict twos, and so pretty awesome rods. They'll be they'll have uh, 15 pound spider wire braid on them, and I will give one of those away to two different people. So it'll be the first 10 people that are on there um, will be who I'm giving that away to. So you got a pretty good chance of of winning a rod um, and probably some other stuff mixed in with that. And I think that's it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna bring on our guest. I've always known him as Tron, but it goes by Jonathan. I guess your real name's Jonathan. Jonathan Davis. What's going on, man? Yeah, man. Not much. Um, appreciate you inviting me to come on the show and talk a little bit about trout fishing, um, or you know, any fishing really. Um, but like I said, I don't know if I'm a guy that's super qualified to talk about fishing on a podcast. But hey, like I said, it's more or less a conversation. Man, I think the guys that like don't feel like they're qualified to talk on the podcast always have the best information you know what i mean like i think just anyone that's passionate about something and is able to to kind of share that passion with others is what people like about this and uh, i don't know you catch some freaking nice trout and catch a bunch of fish so i think you'll be i think it'll be plenty good for the for the show good enough for me at least (laughs) so tell us uh tell us your backstory kind of how you got into this and and um how you got into fishing and kind of fell in love with it and became one of your passions yeah, yeah. Um, I grew up, born and raised here in Wilmington, and so just kind of, um, just by growing up around the water, some buddies and I grew up, you know, doing a little bit of like fall trout fishing and you know summer flounder that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but you know, as a young kid, did I don't know, maybe didn't really have the patience for it then. Just kind of sent like most of the time we were going, we were going home, you know, with no fish or you know just shut out so um so as a kid you know we did it i don't know a good you know 20 30 times a year but it was like i wasn't you know i surfed a lot more than i fished yeah um and then as i got older it sent like a few of my friends really really you know started enjoying it more than i did and so i'd kind of tag along with them when i could but it wasn't until i was i think it wasn't long ago 2014 15 okay I remember it was a summer and um, waves had gone flat and I was just like, man, this is a year I'm going to start fishing, you know, and um, told myself that and went in an intercoastal angler and the boys gave me a Carolina rig and some mud minnows and I just went and tried to figure it out for a little bit, the jetty and, you know, pretty much all summer just didn't catch much, maybe a small flounder here or there, or black sea bass or something, yeah. some trash fish, but um, what kind of made me fall in love with it. it was a late october that same year after that summer and um i went over to one of the causeway bridges with some um some little grubs and uh just tried for a trout and that day i don't know if i've seen a day like that since um but man it was like me and one other old guy it was you know one of those classic trout days north winds um you know cooler we had just had a cold snap and it was just every other cast for I don't know, three hours and every fish was over 20 inches. And after that day, I was like, that's it. I'm done this. You know, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. That's awesome. <clears throat> so, yeah. And then, you know, after that, I kind of made some friends with some boys, some actually a coworker, um, GC Tranch and shout out to him. He, uh, he's got a really cool, uh, he does glass work and gel cut repair. Oh, cool. 
first class glass that's his uh his uh instagram handle yeah, yeah, go yeah. check him out if you need butt work but um man he showed me the river he uh took me all around cb and just kind of you know i learned it with him and we just you know got on google maps and found some spots and just kind of tried it and just learned you know and just figured out fishing and you yeah. know in the inshore waters that's awesome it's everybody needs a day like that you know one of those days where you catch a bunch of fish i always tell clients that like when they want to bring their kids fishing younger kids um you know if they're they're wanting to go sight if the dad's wanting to go like sight fish red fish i'm like this is not the day to bring your kids if you want them to get into fishing like you need to bring them on a day where we can go just catch a bunch of fish and have a lot of i mean that's what gets anyone hooked i don't care what your age is um, I mean, maybe it's, you know, that one, you, you go out once and you catch a 30 inch trout or you go out and you catch a tailing redfish. Like it could be a single fish like that. But most of those kids and most people that I feel like get into it, they have, you know, a pretty epic day and, and with a buddy and they're like, I'm going to start doing this myself, uh, which is, which is super cool. Um, and it's that trout fishing, man, it's, it's, it, it seems like it can be so simple. Like, do you think back on those early days of big numbers of trout and it's like a white curly tail grub and now we break it down into all this crazy stuff. <laughs> Um, and I just wish we could go back to the, the simplicity of it all. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your, so you're, you, you like to do all kinds of fishing, but trout is kind of like your, your main focus, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, uh, drum fishing, you know, red drum fishing and flounder is, you know, I have just as much fun doing that, but I don't know what it is about trout fishing that kind of, I don't know the elusiveness of them or, you know, the, the stubbornness of the fish. It just, it's just, I don't know, I like it quite a bit more. Um, it's just more, a little bit more exciting. Kind of when you do get that big fish, it's like, seems a lot more rewarding than getting like an upper slot or over slot red. Um, yeah. That's just for me, you know. For sure. No, I agree with you. Like a, a big trout, you have to work for. Like a big redfish, if you have bait down there and it swims by, it's 100% going to eat it. You know what I mean? Like a 50-inch redfish even. Um, but, but the trout is not that way by any means what are some of the things that you look for like when you were talking about big trout like what let's talk about conditions first off like what are some of the conditions weather patterns stuff like that that you want to see um for you know if you're gonna gonna go out and be like oh this is the day i could catch a big one yeah yeah um well i guess for me that would kind of vary on seasons um but maybe since we're in spring i'll talk about spring um for me this time of year i'm looking for those those at least the spots I like to fish for bigger trout. I'm looking for those days that have, you know, high sun in the afternoon, um, you know, some shallower flats that have that sun on them with some good muddy bottom. Um, you know, maybe, maybe a wind direction change or a moon change. You know, we got, I kind of prefer that new moon over the full moon, but, um, you know, any changes like that, but like it, you know, if it's been blowing South for the last, three or four days and then we get it switched up to another north north wind um i kind of like those changes you know it seems like those fish start moving around a little bit they're you know even a pressure change over a few days um but this time of year that's kind of what i'm looking for yeah. um following i guess winter's fairly similar you know i kind of like honestly i like those those warmer days in the winter but the few really good fish i've had all came on like nasty rainy cold days no one else is out you know just sitting out there grinding and you know happen to pop one yeah that's that's so true I, i've caught one decent trout on like a it was a 25 inch trout it was a good trout but the only the only citation i've ever caught on a sunny day was that one and i haven't caught many big fish either um but that one w- was surprising i was not expecting it It was with redfish and so um, mm. that was odd too but i'm with you those changes man those changes are so key and i, I like that you said new moon um, like I used to always think full moon or just, that's what I heard. But the more, more guys you talk to that have caught big fish, it seems like they're more focused around that new moon. And, and then like, I bet yesterday and today, some big trout slipped up. You're talking about that wind changing, you know, we had some South wind and, uh, now we got kind of some nasty weather rolling in and a little bit of North wind, I bet had some <clears throat> chewing, but, um, so you, you had a pretty big trout this year. What, what was, uh, that, is that the trout behind you? Is that a, a painting of it? Uh, yeah, so that's actually a um, that's a stamp of it, like a stencil. Um, oh gosh, what's her name? Veronica VB yeah, Fish yeah. Prints is her. Uh, that's her Instagram. She's awesome. She um, 
she does like traditional, I forget the term for it, but it's like a Hawaiian tradition where they stamp the fish. They put like a black ink over that one side of the fish and then some rice paper and stamp it. That's awesome. So yeah, that's it. Um, it was a 31 and a half inch fish. Um, Golly. yeah, but that day, man, um, was just like I said, rainy, nasty. Um, I think the high that day was maybe like 52, 53 and, um, before that fish i probably had between me and one other guy we probably had i don't know more than 33 to 4 pound fish golly that's it was incredible. just one of those days you know up the creek that was just just like that you know it was just yeah. it didn't matter where you cast it shallow flat deep and no matter where you cast it they were going to eat it yeah it's crazy man when those those fish chew like that because it's like you start to think oh maybe they're not in an area um but but when those conditions are right, they're they're in a lot of places that that you fished and probably fished right past them. So that yeah. that's that's super cool to cool to know. Um, what did if you don't want me asking, what did that big fish eat? Um, that fish ate. Where is it? Right here. Um, DOA shrimp, oh, just oh, a yeah. chartreuse DOA, um, the three inch um, with the little secret added to it. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, that thing, that's all, I think I fished, actually, hold on one second. This is the one I caught on, I hung it on that picture. Oh, sweet. Um, I, I don't know if you could tell, but this is the same plug I used all day long. I mean, the one just eye's gone, up. it just got demolished. I used the same one all day for all those fish and that that big girl ate it so um, when that when it slides down the hook the doa are you still fishing it like even if it's if it's kinking up a little bit not normally but that day that like day it were. didn't matter <laughs> like and i didn't want to waste the time to retie up i was it was just so just much fun catching it, it. yeah exactly <laughs> that's exactly. awesome man uh so let's talk a little yeah. bit about like i love fishing a doa as well and i was super intimidated by that bait at first because it, it's it's like a very odd light bait. It's hard to throw. It's very confusing how to work it. So, um, and it seems like now I've learned kind of a couple different ways that are pretty effective for it. How do you like to fish a DOA? Maybe let's talk about like current, in current and not in current. Okay. Um, so for me personally, if there's a good amount of current, I just I don't even fish it. Okay. And, and that's that's not because it's not good in current. Yeah. It's very good in current. That's because I'm too impatient to fish that bait in current. <laughs> um, I like that bait in like in the backs of the creeks where there's no movement, um, or you know in in this time of year in boat basins when there's not a lot of current. And man, I just give it you know a couple really hard pops and then just wait, just let it go all the way to the bottom. And you know just like I do when that when those trout hit it, I mean you can feel it in your feet. You oh know, my it's, gosh. They crush it. <laughs> and you know, and it's always, always on the way back down. And you know, when I like you, I mean I was super intimidated by that intimidated by that bait at first. You know, I just couldn't fish it right, too impatient. I had it in the top of the water column all the time. And then when I kind of figured out to be patient with it, I was just like, man, this thing is deadly. You know, I don't yeah. know why, because it doesn't have very good action. It doesn't have any action really. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe but, the man, legs wiggle a little bit, but yeah, they freaking hammer that thing. Yeah. it's i'm with you man that bite on the doa shrimp when they want it man it is so hard and they eat it head first every time i think that's why it, it yeah. rocks you so good but um yeah that's cool I, i'm with you like in current is where that bait was so intimidating to me until i started catching a couple and it's like it's a do nothing bait really like I, I like to sit off of a bank you know maybe spot locked on the trolling motor and, and if the current's kind of running left to right across the side of my boat, I'm throwing up current a little bit and just kind of dead sticking it and keeping that line tight and maybe some little twitches. But um, but it is awesome and no current. And it's But the, the crazy thing is, what, like it's, I think the intimidating part of that bait is how light it is to people. Um, and you really can't yeah. feel much and I, you know until you, you have to get some bites on it to build up that confidence of like, okay, I'm doing something with this bait other than just you know letting it dangle around on the end of my line. Um, do you j mostly just fish that chartreuse color or, or do, you, do you venture out? Uh, man, the measles, you know, that yeah. red one, um, that's kind of my go-to, but, um, I do a lot of fishing in, in the rivers, you know, and so I kind of like that chartreuse. It seems to go up a little better, but around here, you know, around home, um, I like that measles just cause I don't know, it seems to do a little better in that clear water. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, but, and I, honestly, I don't really fish the TOA a whole lot. Um, you know, just, I guess when the time's right, it's fun, you know, it's a fun way to fish. It's a fun bite. Yeah. Um, but, um, I don't, you know, it doesn't seem like I get the opportunity to throw as much as I want to or, or should. For sure. But what are, uh, what are some of the other baits you like to throw when you're, let's just talk trout. I, I'm, I'm onto this whole yeah. trout thing. What are some of the other baits you like to throw for trout, um, in, in different scenarios? Cool. Yeah. Um, I am, and my friends will tell you, like, I'm so stubborn with the top water plug. That's, I mean, <laughs> it's a big trout bait. Any chance, oh gosh, yeah. And any chance I get, I'll throw it, you know, and, and that's like all spring long, all fall long. I mean, that's what I'm obsessed with top water fishing. Um, so this, uh, I don't know if you can see that, yeah. the, uh, yeah. the full spook, the mullet color. Um, that color man, doesn't work at all. That's, no, not at all. <laughs> That's uh, one of my go-tos. Um, I love that. And um, honestly, this year I really fell in love with that. Uh, the, I'm not a big mirror lure topwater plug fan, but um, Luke Tippett turned me on to their uh, Pro Series, the Clear Eyes. Um, it's like a green back. Uh, man, that thing, I don't know. I guess it's the pitch because it looks and walks just like a skitter walk, but the pitch of that thing may be a little, little higher. Yeah. And, um, Man, I really like that plug. Um, after I think last fall, I started kind of exclusively fishing that one. Okay. Um, but yeah, topwater plugs. Um, Let me ask you a question real quick about that full spook. I noticed that. Do you do you do anything with the hooks? Do you take? It looked like you take the middle hook off on that one. Yeah, okay. and that's um, that was just a recommendation I got from uh, Ryan yeah. Christofferson. He, he gave uh, me the same recommendation. That's the one. Yes, yeah, super trouty guy. I mean, those dudes, him and Ben, you know, they've taught me almost all of what I know about fishing just from going to the shop. Yeah. Um, but I take that middle hook out, okay. and then I swap out. I, as soon as I get it out of the box, pretty much all my plugs, I swap them out for those owner um, black chrome. They're so sticky. Hooks. Yeah. Yeah. Fish yeah, looks at it and it, it's hooked. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I redid all my my mirrodines this past winter. Uh, I think I was sick and just needed something to do, and redid them all, and uh, ended up putting one through my middle finger in the car oh, with my gosh. wife, and uh, had to get it cut out. Oh, that's brutal! Not even yeah. by a fish. All right, so I interrupted you. You're going into another another bait that you like to throw. Um, so another bait I like to throw, I mean, all, you know, a lot of soft plastics. I'm a big soft plastic fan. Um, hard baits, you know, I love them too. Um, but you know, when the temperatures are right, I like soft plastics. Um, and Z-Man is kind of my, my deal. Um, Z-Man with the eye strike fishing jig head. Yeah. Um, they're new, man, they're new Texas eyes. Whew, they're awesome. Things are awesome. Especially uh, paired with the Z-Man, like you're saying, because that, oh, that yeah. float up action that you get from it is killer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that bait, you know, and a lot of shrimp profiles I like. I think it's called the Easy Shrimp, maybe. Um, is that the I one really that like. looks re really like a shrimp, not the mantis yeah. shrimp looking one? Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's the one that looks exactly like a shrimp, and I like that one the best. Um, but honestly, I kind of been fishing the the jerk shrimp just out of necessity because I I didn't have a pack of the Easy Shrimps, and I got two citations on that in the last month and a half golly that's awesome <clears throat> yeah the, the laguna shrimp that pink one yeah um, um but then honestly uh what's his name uh captain chris speckled truth yeah um the, he got me into the ned rigs um and i like i kind of only fish it with these uh trout tricks on them but man those things work too Especially in some, you know, in still water where kind of those, it went, like you said, somewhat of a do nothing bait for me um, may not be the right way to fit. That's how I fish it. You know, they, right. they sit on the bottom and they just kind of stand up and that bait just wiggles around. And I can't tell you how many bites I've had, um, you know, either like zipping up my jacket or sticking my rod between my legs and just leaving it there and had a bite boom, you know, That's just sweet. from it sitting on the ground. That's good to hear. That was one of the baits that I like really wanted to try to fish this winter. And I just I was telling myself I was going to, and I never did. I never picked it up, never fished it at all. Do you like that in, in shallow water? Have you fished it in shallow water at all? It works good in shallow water too. Yeah. Yeah, so, it does. Um, yep. I like it in shallow water. I, I like it in deeper water 
better, but man, it's that thing's taking forever to get to the bottom. Of it, you know, um, <laughs> that's why you so might be zipping kinda, your jacket up on the way down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, you know, it's it's kind of like one of those baits. Like I don't know a lot of anglers have those baits in their box where it's like they know it works and it works good, but they just don't feel like tying it on because you know it's like or you tie it on and you fish it for like three minutes and you're like ah oh, screw this thing and you put it up you know yeah um but you know if you give it some time it, it works it's proven me wrong a few times i would say i was just thinking about this because we're talking about all these different baits that w- the days that i've done really well like going out and trout fishing by myself i'll like pre-rig five or six rods like especially in the winter and and, and instead of like because when you're sitting there and you're like i don't want to retie something on i'm just gonna keep fishing this when you can easily like reach over and it doesn't have to be five or six rods but you know two or three different baits and being able to just switch real quickly in the same spot and try you know two or three different baits um it's crazy how much you know you might fish a swim bait in a spot and then throw that ned rig in there probably and get a fish in the exact same cast that that didn't eat one bait so um it's at least for me because my laziness it's important and this might help other people out there to to have a few different things tied on to when you're going into an area to fish um do you do you tend to do that or you kind of or you take the time and retie and and all that uh no absolutely i do that when i can um so i don't i don't have a boat um so i do a lot of on foot yep. and a lot of um you know not a lot but a fair amount of kayak fishing too um and i go with some buddies you know on their boat but um so when i when i'm on a boat or on foot you know i'll do the same as you i'll t- pre-tie up a bunch of different things that way i can just kind of rifle through them and grab what i what what you know the situation needs um but in a kayak it's a whole nother deal um you know i'll bring two rods and you know i'm i'm kind of i'm like one of those guys who wants to bring everything i have so uh (laughs) so i i've got my box of everything and i just kind of and it seems like you know i have two or three rods on the kayak they're all tied up with something different and one will work and i'll you know be breaking off and just retying on that same rod rather than you know right, right. utilizing the three i have you know for sure I'll come home and i'll be like man i only use the same rod all day why not bring these other two <laughs> i'm with you on that it's uh it, i think i have right now one two three four five seven rods on my boat today and we fish two two different rods and i have seven and and they get kicked all the freaking time i can't tell how many rods i get broken in my skiff because they kind of hang out on the gunnels a little bit and the guy will get up beside me and just kick them into the rod holder and break the tips off of them. So it's, it, but I'm with, it's, it, you, when you have all this stuff and you spend all this time organizing your tackle and collecting your tackle, it's like, I want to be able to open my hatch or open my tackle box or, and see all my stuff, even though I probably don't fish half of it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, absolutely. Are there any other baits, hard bait? What about subsurface hard baits? Do you fish, are there any of those that you, you prefer and would recommend anybody? Um, yeah, seven MR 17s and 18s are great baits. Um, I didn't this year and last year, I didn't fish them as much. Um, man, I, I kind of went old school, not old school. I mean, it's still a great bait, but, uh, you know, the 52, yeah. um, just old school mirror or full size, um, or the TT, you know, those things are deadly. Um, and we had a really good year in the surf this year. Um, and, I had, you know, that, that one plug tied on my surf rod for, I don't know, a month. That same one didn't lose it and just caught who knows how many fish on that thing in the surf. That's awesome. Um, and so that's one hard subsurface bait I really, really like because it's kind of, it's an easy bait to fish. You know, you just kind of, I, I like to just slow retrieve, no twitches. That's what the old school guys, you know, told me, no twitches, just, you know, slow roll that thing back in and they'll stomp it. For sure. Um, do you do most then, of your surf fishing at night, or do you do a little bit of both, daytime and nighttime? Man, I'm kind of one of those weekend warriors, so I do it when I can. Yeah. Um, you know, when I'm not working, um, I'm kind of fortunate. I did get travel for work all over. Um, I'm a carpenter, so I work on the beaches a lot on these custom homes. Yeah. So, I got pretty lucky. Like this past winter, when the bite was good in the surf, I was either on a job in Topsail or on a job in Curie Beach, and those are like my two places I want to be. So <laughs> that's perfect. Um, it was like lunch breaks and pre-work and after work, I was kind of taking advantage of when I could, but, um, I, you know, night, night surf fishing is kind of, you know, what a lot of guys tend to do and it, it works well, but I caught plenty, plenty of fish when the sun was up for in sure. The surf. For sure. 
It's uh, I had a day. I was let me switch this camera out because my battery just died here. Here we go. Sorry guys that are listening to this. Now you get to see my my face up close. Um, I had a day. I think I talked about this on another podcast that I was. I went out to trout fish. It was early. There wasn't a ton of fish in the marsh yet, um, and it sucked. I didn't get any bites, and I went out to I went out Rich's Inlet and off of Lee Island to go look for some schools of redfish uh, in the surf. I was on my, my larger boat and um, couldn't find any redfish, and I'm sitting there in the tower, and I see some fish coming by, and I look down, and it looked like uh, bluefish, and I was like, I'm not going to cast to them. You know, I just I still just had a, like a, I think I had a trout trick on a light jig head with like 15 pound fluoro, um, and so I let them swim by. Then I saw another group of like 20, and I looked down, and I was like, oh, just big bluefish, didn't throw to them. And then another group came by, and I was like, I'm just going to throw it to them. And I threw in there and caught a 23 inch trout, and it was all schools of freaking speckled trout coming down the beach in crystal clear water, like. One, one school would come by, and then five minutes later, another school would come by. And then all of a sudden, it would be like, I couldn't get any of the big ones to eat. But then it would be a pack of like six together, all huge trout swimming together. Mm. And the, they were swimming in size classes like redfish. I've never seen anything like it. And ended up catching, I think, probably 10 or 12 trout around 20 inches, which was super cool to be able to sight fish. I've never been able to do that before. Um, but that Dang. was like, and then two or three days later, like Rich's Inlet started fishing really well that year or this year and and so it, it was cool to to realize I'm glad I casted because I was about to just like turn around and be like it's just a bunch of bluefish out here um but to see it you know what you're fishing from the beach and and there's you know there's maybe one or two days you could probably ever do that a year weather wise um mm. but but it, it it it's really cool how many fish hang out in that surf and travel through the surf and I think a lot of fish are, are transitioning in and out of the surf a lot too. Like they'll come in those inlets and they'll drop back out in the surf and they'll come in the inlets and they'll drop back out in the surf. Uh, so that's something I want to do more. And I think my time for that is done. Cause I've got a baby on the way June 24th. Hmm. And so like going out at night and trying to trout fish at night will probably not be uh, a ton of that going on, but would well, you, or here's a good question for you. How many citations have you caught on foot? Um, Whoa, two two god dude two i think two of the i don't know seven seven heck yeah so you know in five years i think i've had set and it was like the first one only came i think it was three winters ago so seven and three years um but you know most of them were in a boat two of them were in a kayak those two were you know this past couple months um but yeah only two on foot um yeah that's that's super cool not that more can't happen you know yeah um, definitely because ryan i was right beside ryan when he probably had three or four on foot in you know a month beside me so yeah i uh that spot you're talking about with ryan i think the spot you're talking about we were fishing it from the boat talking about top water and um maybe it maybe it, well i was fishing with ryan with top water or i was throwing like a soft plastic and it was like 11 o'clock sunny um, or like pretty much not even fall. I mean, it was late summer and he kept throwing top water, kept throwing top water, nothing, no bites, nothing on top water. And then I, I think I had one small trout on a soft plastic. And I, like I was saying, it was like 11 o'clock and this fish just smokes his plug and ended up being a seven and a half pound trout, like 11 o'clock during the day on the top water plug. And I was like, all right, it's worth throwing the big, big trout will eat those big top water plugs, which is super just blew me yeah. away. I mean, I know it could always happen, but I've, I don't think I've ever caught a trout on top water in the middle of the day unless it's like overcast, rainy, kind of nasty stuff. But but um, that's cool. Oh, but, yeah, that works, man. Uh, that, and yes, that's you know that's where uh, that's where we you know did our damage. And um, I remember you know him. He showed me that fish, and told me about that day, um, and that's how I don't know what it is about those fish and when it's like that, but it seems like when I kind of figured out that spot with top water, it was like, I was fishing the heck out of it with subsurface baits and jigs and stuff yeah. and maybe get a fish every now and then. And I was just like, man, let me just, and it was a, it was a, like overcast day and I started throwing top water plug and just getting smashed. You know, <laughs> and it was like, like every cast, I was like, man, I just fished this for two hours with the subsurface bait and did get one bite. And now all of a sudden, you know, every other cast and getting bit on top. Um, and so then, you know, and even still, like that's pretty much what I exclusively fish when I when I fish that spot. Yeah. Um, 
and you know i was up there saturday and didn't get much but um but you know high sun two three o'clock in the afternoon you know three and a half pounder on top you know yeah that's yeah you know i i was one of those kind of and I still do believe in, you know, low light conditions for top water for sure. But man, they are not, if they're hungry, they are not afraid to hit that thing. If for that sure. sun is high. For sure. It's definitely something to do. Like, it's definitely something to not write off. And I, I think yeah. that, you know, there, there became, there came a point for me, like I, I'd say three years ago, really just two years ago, I really started caring about trout fishing, like wanting to catch big trout. I didn't realize how cool it was. Like I didn't realize how how addicting it was. Like I could give a rip about a redfish now. Really, I just want to catch hmm. catch trout, and I haven't caught very many big ones. But a topwater is a good way to like eliminate some of the smaller fish. You know, when you really do want to hunt for a bigger fish, I feel like you know when you're fishing a 17, you're gonna get a lot of. I mean, if you just want to go out and catch fish, it's not a bad. There's nothing wrong with that. But but trying to find a bait that might eliminate some of the smaller bites and get some of the bigger bites. I think can be beneficial. Like I was fishing and I know Ryan was fishing some bigger baits than myself, but, but the five inch diesel minnow, like when that came out, um, from Mm. Z-Man and I had a lot of good fish on the five inch diesel minnow. Um, there's a seven inch. I know guys have been catching them on seven inches and and my buddy Elias, he fishes like big ass glide baits, like big swim baits and stuff and catches trout on them. Um, but what's crazy too is like, I remember Ryan said that he had a, a 14 inch trout on a seven inch uh, swim bait like a seven inch oh, yeah. plastic so you're not you're not totally eliminating the little fish if you go bigger with a bait but <laughs> it's not uh, at all it's a uh, yeah interesting idea they're not afraid to eat that thing i think um you know i was fishing a lot of swim baits um a couple winters ago and you know those big storm shads yeah. um you know the five and the six inches and my wife same deal she had like a 14 inch trout on the six inch storm you know <laughs> and it choked it like it was gone that thing was in its mouth completely so for sure for sure uh, well is there anything else we're at 30 minutes here and we can definitely keep talking but is there anything else on on your end well how about let's speak to real quick like maybe some encouraging words to people that don't have a boat like what it might like just maybe like encourage them that you know it can be done you can't catch quality fish on foot it might take a little more work and back and studying but um, let's talk about that for just a second and then we'll maybe close her out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, me, for me, it was just kind of out of necessity, you know, yeah. um, there's periods where I've had boats and periods where I didn't. And, um, especially when I first started, I didn't. Um, and so, you know, me and friends would, you know, go fishy spots in a boat and I would just be, you know, so fired up to fish. I'd be like, well, let me hop on Google Maps and, you know, see if there's like any way to get to that spot on foot, you know, <laughs> yeah. or, or like, can I throw the waders on or, you know, like whose lot am I trespassing through to get there? And, um, and that was kind of like most of what it was, was just, you know, um, just that is such a good tool for fishing in my opinion. It's Google Maps. Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of like, it's a funny time to be a fisherman you know a lot of folks are not friendly to the whole social fishing thing and you know it gives away a lot of spots and a lot of secrets and stuff and i get that um you know but it also could be used as a good tool you know i'm not um looking at scouting people's pictures but definitely like hopping on google maps and just saying thinking like man this water looks good um you know is this spot like accessible through from the car or you know can i hop out on foot and hike a mile or two to get to it or whatever you know um and so it definitely can be done there's plenty plenty of water um that can be hit on foot even here you know at home like there's spots you know on that you can hit on foot that you can catch good fish at um definitely and it shouldn't be not like friends of mine like last spring just kept messaging me like like how are you catching these big fish on foot and i'm like man it's the same spots that we're going to in a boat like it's no you know different you know right. um so it can be done and it's it's fun and it's rewarding and honestly i prefer it um if you know if i if it's a good spot i kind of rather be standing on the bank um able to kind of like you know be stand where i want or like if i'm fighting a fish i could walk you know to net it or something you're not kind of confined to that small spot in a boat especially with three guys in a skiff or something so 
um, it can, it's, it's fun, you know, and it's, it's rewarding. Um, it's frustrating at times when it's parts of the season where, you know, like there's not a lot of spots that are worth it on foot and you kind of see all your buddies catching good fish in a boat and start hopping on Craigslist, you know, <laughs> pipe dreaming about a new boat. <laughs> I, I think um, too, one of the cool things about fishing on foot is like the same deal as when I look at somebody on a kayak or a paddleboard is like, you're forced to slow down a little bit and really pick your area apart and not rush through something. Um, you know, I would say in the winter time when you, if you're in an area where there's trout on a boat or on foot, there's probably a really good trout in there somewhere. Um, you Mm -hmm. know, they, they kind of group up in these, these certain zones and slowing down, being really sneaky, really quiet, fishing really well, trying different baits. Uh, it's easier to do on foot than on a boat. And I think that's why you see a lot of big fish caught on foot. I think that's why the guys in Texas all like to get out of their boat and wade. You know, it, you, it, you're a little more um, immersed in that element and, and less intrusive, I would say, when you're on foot. But maybe not. Yeah. And like you said, you know, you're forced to really pick apart that area and really make a lot of casts. And that's what, you know, my most recent citations were making a lot of casts. You know, not a lot of fish, but a lot of casts. And, you know, eventually that one big one just decided to eat. Um, And it was only because I was in a kayak and there was no other spots near there to kayak to. So I was like, well, we'll just stay here forever until I find something. Um, you know, and it, and it paid off, you know, it doesn't always, you know, definitely strike out, um, doing that, but you know, it, it's cool when you're, when you're really forced and you don't have any other option. Cause you, you, I, at least for me, I don't have that like thing in the back of my head saying like, Oh, well you could go over here, you know, you could hop on plane and, and go be at this spot in five minutes. You know, that's not even a thought. So right. it's like, well, let me just really start looking at different parts of the water or, or or current seams or whatever um or start thinking about like what that bottom's like you know and so um that's kind of a, a benefit to either kayak fishing or being on foot yeah definitely um and i would say i'd encourage everyone out there to not worry too much about trespassing if you're going to fish on foot just <laughs> go for it and just apologize later because um i mean yeah. at the end of the day you're just fishing you know it's not that big of a deal I mean, maybe to somebody it is, but, but I'd, I'd say go for it. I've definitely sent some of my clients sometimes. That's like in the summer, like the text that you get from every client almost is like, is there any good spots to fish on foot, you know, on the day we're not fishing? <laughs> and I've, I've sent them to, to some spots where people have gotten kicked out and like, oh, go fish this area or walk out here, stand in this person's yard and just fish until they kick you out. Or, um, you know, it's not like you're going to jail, so go for it and go get a big fish and, um, and you know, get – kicked out who cares but well dude thank you so much is there uh anything else you want to share if anybody wants to get up with you it's uh tron underscore davis on instagram t-r-o-n right yep cool yep you got it and uh yeah hit him up ask him for his gps coordinates and uh i think he charged you charge what 50 bucks a a spot yeah (laughs) yeah perfect perfect good way to start saving up for the for the boat i need to i need to start (laughs) start selling some spots too i'm getting pretty broke here but uh well, cool, man. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show. I'm going to close her out here, and if you'll just hang tight, I'll talk to you on Skype here in just a second. You guys, thank you all okay. for uh, for tuning in. Thanks again, Jonathan, for uh, for sharing some some secrets with us and, and just giving us some, some of your, your thoughts and your time. Um, again, you guys, I uh, hope everyone out there is safe with this coronavirus going on. It's a little scary. Um, just be smart and get out in the water, get away from everybody, go catch some fish. Uh, I'm going to mention one more time, private Facebook group that you can join is the Eastern Current Fishing. And then um, I will link the Patreon account here if you just want to do a small donation per month. It's a huge help, um, especially right now, um, just helping helping a little bit with the back end of this stuff since um, a lot of guide trips are canceling and I just don't have the funds to, to throw at Eastern Current as much right now. And uh, that would be much, much appreciated. But um, we will see you all in the next episode later.